meeting Peg. As I watched, the pool kind of sucked itself up and swirled around and turned into an old boogie woman. She was short and onion-shaped from the layers and layers of the ratty, wet skirts and shawl she had on. Her nails were long and black, and her thin gray hair dipped over her head and shoulders like a string mop. She had a round, pale face and a round, muddy eyes and a smell like a row of green knives. That and the way she was looking at me as if I was double-dipped chocolate ice cream cone told me that she rode with the wild hunt. Hello there, dear. You can call me Peg Powler. I was at your changing. You were too little to remember me, but I remember you. You, if memory serves, are called Neef. My first thought was when Artis found out that I was talking to Peg Powler of the Wild Hunt. She was going to kill me, or at least put me to sleep for a hundred years. My second thought was that if I could get myself out of this, she would never have to know. Changeling by Delia Sherman. Sherman. Chapter 1. Fairy godmothers are always right. Neef's rules for changeling. Wake up, Neef. Spring cleaning tomorrow. Spring cleaning today. Cobwebs to sweep, mice to relocate. Turtles to wake up and polish. And you can clean your room. I groaned and put the pillow over my head. A cold, wet nose touched my forehead and flipped the pillow away. None of that now, Artis said. If you don't get crackling, the boglists will come visit. And then they will... You Then where will you be? Asleep, I said. Go away, Artis. The covers slithered off my shoulders. I made a grab for them, caught something long and whip-like instead of letting it go again. Fast, I haven't pulled her tail on purpose since I was very little. Artis hates having her tail pulled even more than I hate waking up. She says it's not respectful to pull my fairy god fairy godmother's tail. Artis is a white rat and a very and very beautiful. She was a fur like a powder puff, eyes like polished rubies and long delicate whiskers. I swear she says as much with her whiskers as she does with words. Finally, she said, as I sat up and yawned, come right down as soon as you're dressed and had breakfast. I want you to get start on those turtles. She surveyed my room. Her whiskers served. This place looks like a Boorah's nest. Boorah's nest. We'll have to get blockhouse brownie and the help you organize it again i knew my room was a mess it always is it's hard to keep a place neat when the only furniture is curtained bed and a old chest the walls are mostly taken up by pointy stone windows so there's nowhere except the floor to keep my leaf collection and my rocks not to mention the mortal magazines and papers and stuff I've picked up in the park. Artis hopped off my bed and disappeared down the stairs. I got up and sifted through my chest, looking for something I could wear. Everything I had was suddenly too tight, too short, or both. Much as I hated spring cleaning, at least it meant I'd been getting new clothes. I wiggled into some green leggings and a shirt that had been used to be floppy. Dr tried to drag a comb through my frizzy hair, gave up, and dug around until I found my silver knife and fork. 
Then I looked for a satchel down from its hook and climbed back onto my bed. Toast and jam, please, I told it. Ap apricot jam and apple juice. Satchel in my magic bag. It's brown leather and has brass buckle buckles and its own ideas about the proper breakfast for spring cleaning day. When I lifted its flap, I found a glass of orange juice. I hate orange juice. And a plate of eggs and sausage, which I wasn't in the mood for, but I ate it anyway. In the New York I lived in, mortals don't call the short. The fairy folk do. Ordinary mortals think New York outside is the only one there is. They're wrong. There are at least two New Yorks, and it probably more, sharing the same space, but not exactly same reality. I live in the New York between. Things are invisible outside, are visible between. Every tall building, for instance, has its own mountain spirit that outsiders can't see, but we can. Our bridges and tunnels are swarming with trolls and demons of all sizes and colors. Our streets are crowded with Saidhi from Ireland, Kitsu, and Tunkuki from Japan. Devi from India and and our assortments of giants and demons and frost spirits and willow o the wisps from all over the world. Some of the human looking folk cross the to New York outside for fun and adventures. But ordinary mortals can't come to New York between unless the folk between them. This happens more often than you think. Mostly the visiting mortal mortals don't remember much. I remember, but then I live here. I'm a changeling, a kidnapper from the brewery of changelings. Affairs brought me here when I was little. Leaving a fairy that looked just like me behind in my bed. It's a great honor to be a Central Park changeling. Other neighborhoods in the York between have a bunch of mortal changelings, but park folk aren't all that comfortable with mortals and only have changelings because it's traditional. So I was the only mortal around. I spent a long a lot of the time thinking about why I was stolen and brought to the Central Park. Before I was big enough to understand the questions were against the rules, I used to per persert artists about it. Her answers were either silly, because you have curly hair, because you like cookies, or too vague to be useful, because you're good for us, because we can. Finally, I got the message and stopped asking. After I finished my bre my eggs, I went down to the spiral stairs to the kitchen where artists had row of what looked like mud-clothed rocks lined up on the floor. Every once in a while, one would poke out the wrinkled head, blinked yawn, and retreat again. I knew how it felt. Hand me down the turtle wax, artist said. Artress said. And fetch some water. I swear they've even they're even muddier than usual this year. There's no running water in Belverde Castle. Hauling it from the turtle pond, it is the main chore. It's no joke, especially on bath day. The bucket is wooden and heavy, even when it's empty. I have to lug it across the terrace to the edge of the cliff overlooking the pond, attach the bucket to the rope, dropped it into the water, and it pulled and pull it up again without spilling. Plus, I have to be careful not to disturb the fish 
or I'll get in trouble with the water rat. The water rat is fictional character. A writer made him up, but he was so real that he took on a life of his own. He loves messing around in boats and spends the whole summer either fixing his rowboat or scuffling it around the pond having picnics and t talking to the fish and the turtles, insulting the ducks and the nests and its reeds. Today, he had the boat turned upside down on the grassy bank and painting the bottom sky blue. Hello there, youngster, he called up to me. His white polo shirt and baggy churnos were neat as always, but he had straight of blue paint across his muzzle. You haven't picked up any fish, is that on your bucket of yours? By any chance? Spring cleaning or no spring cleaning, I don't like my fish to starve in the spawning season. No, Mr. Rat, I called back politely. That's a good girl, he said. Busy time of the year. Is it? Isn't it? When things have calmed down a bit, look out for me. And I'll take you for a nice row. We'll pack a basket, trade stories. Have I told you about the time Mole and Toad and the Badger and I turfed the wild wooders out of the Toad Hall back in the old country? Yes, Mr. Rat, but I like to hear it again. Excellent, he said cheerfully. Come when you like. Bring Estris. Bring estress sorry a few of those wonderful golden biscuits of hers would be very welcome and a new story if you have one all folk love all folk love stories they love to hear them nearly as much as they love to tell them i've heard stories from japan brazil ireland russia kenya Jamaica, just about every country in the world whose folk have followed the mortal immigrants to New York. Astris, who is native New Yorker, specializes in New York stories like the sewer matron's worker's wife and the little red basketball cap. The stories are as different as the folk who tell them but the one thing they have in common is more morals don't be greedy is a popular one and don't ask too many questions and don't be too curious and the most important of all don't break the rules i love the stories but i could live without the morals they all boil down to don't don't do this, don't talk to that, don't turn around and look when you hear a strange noise, don't turn over stones to see what's under them, don't swim in Harmon Mere or walk on Sheep's Meadow without a shepherd, don't ride on any black animal with flaming eyes, because if you do, you'll be sorry, 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 sorry. Once I asked Atris what happened to all the morals who hadn't disobeyed, all those don'ts, and she looked at me, her whiskers confused. I don't know, she said. I never thought about it. Perhaps they went straight to living happily ever after. Well, I thought about it, and what I thought was that nothing happened to those morals. Nothing at all. Which was, which was what was happening to me, like a rate, like radium turia with no ball to go to. I was stuck fetching water and cleaning my room forever and ever. The water rat went back to his painting and I hauled the bucket, sloshing back across the courtyard. When I got to the kitchen, Estris had brushed the worst of the mud of the turtles thank you
pet, she said, dipping her scrub brush into the water. There's more to do today than I thought. I've been talking to the mice. There are six families to pack and more to the Shakespeare garden. And the ghosts in the basement are stuck in the cobwebs again. And the squirrels need help getting those nutshells out of the attic. I can't spare the time to go to the blockhouse. We'll have to leave your room until tomorrow. This is the kind of news that sounds better than it actually is. No brownie didn't just mean not cleaning my room today. It meant entertaining baby mice and calming the historical ghost. Or if I was really lucky, shoveling nutshells out of the attic. And I'd still have to clean my room tomorrow. Why don't I go get the brownie by myself? I said. No, said Artis, scrubbing briskly. Unsupervised adventures are for big girls. But I am big, Estrus. Just look at me. She looked. Her whiskers expressed a familiar combination of impatience and worry, moving into a surprise as she took into my two short leggings and two tight shirt so you are she says slowly still the north woods it's not safe up there maybe the puka can go with you on any other day this would have been fine the puka is a lot more fun to be around than estrus who tends to turn everything into a lesson on folklore he's a trickster and a shapeshifter when he's not being a man, he's being one of those flaming-eyed animals. It's dangerous for mortals to ride. But he's my fairy godfather, so I can ride him whenever I want. Today, through, I was feeling itchy and restless. I wanted to be somewhere I didn't always go, doing something I didn't always do. I wanted an adventure. It's spring cleaning day, I said. He's probably busy. Please, can I go alone? It's not like Block House is hard to find. All I have to do is follow the brownies path up to the crest of the hill, and I'm there. Well, said Estrus. Her eyes darted from me to the turtles to swarm of excited mice piling candle stirbs and candy wrappers and moldy bread by the kitchen door. All right, but go ahead there and come right back. Keep on the main path of, to the blockhouse. Don't look to the left, don't look to the right. And whatever I do, don't wander from the path, I finished for her. Do I look like a little red fat baseball cap? Astris fixed her, fixed me with her ruby eyes. The north woods are dangerous. Me, the wild hunt lives in the north woods. Just because the hunt doesn't ride by daylight doesn't mean all the hunters are asleep. I was about to be ready to jump out of my skin with impatience. I know, Estrus, I can take care of myself. You taught me how to say I am under the protection of the genius of Central Park. Is about million languages. Remember? So I did, Estra said. But the geni genius's protection only covers you from consumptions and grievous bodily harm. There are other ways to hunt and can hurt you. Don't talk to anyone you don't know. And if you meet a stranger, Call the puka immediately. Do you have the hair to summon him with? Do you have the satchel in case you get hungry? Oh, dear. Maybe I should come with you after all. Don't worry, I said. I'll be fine. Bye. And I was out of there before she could change her mind. 
The stones of the courtyard were warm under my bare feet, and the air smelled of damp soil and green things growing. The big mulberry tree in Shakespeare Garden was bright with tightly furled buds. Down by its roots, the fairy's mustard seed and the peace, peace blossom were trying to talk to some primroses into unfolding early so they could have new skirts. I waved and shouted, but they didn't even hear me. The shortest way to Northwood lies straight across the Central Park Central. On the warm, on warm brightest days, the huge lawn is usually thick with folk playing complicated games or spreading their wings to the sun. Today was the deserted except for a team of corn spirits drifting slowly along the grass, combining it smooth with their long fingers, hoping they were too focused on their work to see me. I tried to sneak across behind them, but as soon as my foot touched the grass, they yelled at me to get off. One of the things I hate about folk is that they notice you when you don't want them to. The path they took me to East Eblisk. Eblisk. They turned north toward the Metropolitan Museum. Oh, Metropolitan Museum. Some adventure. Some adventure. This was a path I walked nearly every day on my way to the museum to learn art and mortal languages. Sometimes I went on to the nearby reserver to swim with the Nixies and the Undines. I'd never been allowed to go further north than that. Not alone. Today, the reserver embarkment showed signs of the sun. Wait, of the spring cleaning, all drept with water weed airing in the sun. I scrambled up and threw a pebble into the water. A sleek-headed Nixie surfaced and shook her long green hair out of her eyes. What do you want? She snapped. Hi, Agel, I said. I'm going to the North Woods to fetch the Black House Brownie by myself. You nearly brained me with a rock to tell me that. Go away. Some people have work to do. A gal flicked her, hair, flicked her tail and disappeared. Folk are like that. Bother them when they're busy and they'll bite your head off. The nasty ones. Okay. The nasty ones do it literally. Beyond the reserve and the east meadow from here, the most direct routine to Northwoods is by the mount. It is, it is not, however, the safest way to go. The mount is surrounded by woods and haunted by ghosts and forest demons and ogres and chanted snakes. Even under today's bright sunshine the trees looked extra dark and gnarly totally unspring cleanable i decided that estrus would want would want me to take the long way around it was a long walk by the time i got to harm harm limb near my feet were like lumps of hot tar I got an apple from Satchel and cooled my toes in the water while I ate it. It just wasn't fair, at least, at the very least. I should have met an old woman at the crossroads, or a magic bluebird, or a fairy musician offering to sell his fiddle in exchange for something I shouldn't give up. The most exciting things I see today were teams of velas and squirrels and dryads in dryads cleaning the dead wood out of the tree 
encouraging the baby leaves to grow. Boring. Something rustled in the reeds and my heart beat. My heart beat a little faster. A pair of ducks appeared from behind the rock, herding a clunch of puffball, duckling out towards the open water. I threw my apple core at them, got up, trudged on towards the north woods. As Astrid said, the north woods are wild, south of the Central Park Central. The dr- the dryads and the ham hamadryads keep the trees and bushes groomed and neat in the north woods. They don't bother. The wild hunt lives in the north woods, and the wild hunt acknowledges no authority except sometimes the genius of the Central Park. For, for anybody who doesn't know, genius is short for gen, genius loco, loci, which I know for Latin lessons means the spirit of the place. Important New York places, Wall Street, Broadway, Grand Central Station, the New York Public Library, the Village, and the Geniuses. Some are really, really old, like the Mermaid Queen of the New York Harbor. Some are practically brand new, like the Conductor of Lincoln Center, but each genius rules with territory absolutely. The Green Lady of Central Park is originally genius of the Ireland, uh, wait, island of Manhattan. We park folk are very proud of her during the Genius Wars. Genius Wars. Uh, she fought the newer, younger city geniuses for territory, losing arc after arc of woodland up to their buildings. Eventually, they made a treaty. Central Park was separated from the rest of the city, and the lady got some of her land back. Now she's the queen of all green places in New York, and the Wild Hunt owns her allegiance. Mostly, she lets them do what they want, which is why the North Woods are so dark and tangled and dangerous. The path to the blockhouse is easy to find, but the brownie keeps it clean, and clear of brambles and rocks and old dead branches. I stomped along it, getting hotter and crabbier by the step, until I got the massive stone stair that leads to the top of the hill. I wiped my sweaty face on my sleeve. Heroes and stories have magic shoes and things that help them to get through boring parts of their adventures. So I wasn't a real hero, or this wasn't a real adventure, which I already figured out, but I didn't like having my nose rubbed in it. I tripped on the third step and landed spiraling. Sitting up, I licked my scraped palm and checked out the rip in my leggings, and I and then I noticed a second path branching off the steps to the right, a path I swear hadn't been there before. Scrambling my, scrambling to my feet, I peered into the shadows. It looked as if a path climbed the hill in a gentle spiral, longer but not nearly as stepped as a brownie's stair. The path itself was narrow and rocky and weedy underfoot, and the branches of the trees wove together above it to make a cool green murmuring tunnel. I knew what I should do, of course. I should turn away from the tempting path and climbed straight to the blockhouse as Astris had told me to. But if I did that, there'd be no adventure. Every story I'd ever heard started with the hero breaking a rule, sometimes by accident, sometimes on purpose. Either way, they lived happily ever after, stairs or path. A fake adventure or a real one. It was up to me. Who cared about the little red baseball cap? She was an idiot who couldn't tell the difference between 
an old lady in a wolf in a nightgown. I've heard a lot of fairy tales, and I remembered what I heard. If the stories warned me against getting in trouble, they also should showed me ways of getting out of it again. I took a deep breath and stepped onto the rocky path.